Okay, welcome to another Prepared Flight Simulator video. And again, we are back here with our, what is this vessel? The Mooney Acclaim, I think is what it's called. Kind of forgot the name of it already. This is the one that we've been, I've been using uh, for most of my flights. And the one I've been using for this mountain hopping type of series that I've been doing. Now this time I'm going to repeat the last hop that I did. I think it was uh, part 7. In that one, I had the track IR on, and I was kind of overly distracted by that, and I crashed on the landing, and I just was kind of overly frustrated with that flight. I just want to redo it. Uh, before I jump into that, I do want to give a quick shout-out to uh, this person, Ch Chida Beer. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, and if I try to pronounce it, I'll probably mutilate it, so I'm not really going to try. Uh, but he mentioned in here that you know, he noticed that I have a 1920 by 1080 resolution and all I needed to do to fix some of the uh, menu problems, because if you saw the the uh, video I did where I was showing the UI of prepared and I was kind of showing how some of the uh, some of the uh, options like appear and they just they just don't line up right. And he pointed me to something here. I'll point it out here quickly in this video. If you go to settings display and I must be blind because this existed in 2.0 and I never saw it. I just never noticed it. But down here, view and panel uh, settings, if you click wide view aspect ratio, that fixes the problem. And again, the problem was like when you're looking at menus like this, sometimes some of the uh, text will appear to be below, you know, like but you, here you have this like f stuff here in this checkbox and an item might be below that area and you can't read it, you can't see what it says, you can't check the item because it's below that point. But anyway, uh, checking that fixes it, and I suppose I should maybe look closer at what some of these options are at some point, but I won't do that now. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's take off and get going here. Um, I've got everything set up. We are, again, starting off on 2v1, going to KS, KX, which you can see here. It's about uh, 82 nautical miles. So let me center the view here, and let's get underway. Let me go ahead and hide that menu. One thing that still seems to be a problem is... Uh, if I right click out here on, you know, anywhere, of course you don't see the menus when I do that, but if I right click out here anywhere, I can go to hide menu bar. But for some reason I have to do that twice. I don't know why that is. I wish they would fix that because that's kind of annoying. Um, or just make it so that that menu bar would only come up when I hold down the alt key or something like that. I don't like having it up there for no reason. All right, let's uh, check and make sure that we have some flaps for takeoff. Make sure our barometer's set, which I think I already did that. You know, one thing I want to do, too, uh, before we get going, just give me one second. I want to set some weather up so that we're not flying in just perfectly clear conditions. Yeah, I forgot in, the, in, the couple of, in a couple of hops, I forgot to, you know, give some kind of weather. Don't want to make it too complicated, but uh, let's go with... Uh, I kind of like flying in gray and rainy conditions. <laughs> I don't know why, I just do. Fogged in might be a bit much. Let's go gray and rainy. Yeah, that's nice. Gives us something more to look at. And again, that menu bar at the top. So I'll right-click out here, hide menu bar. Right-click again, hide menu bar, and it's gone. Stuff like that is dumb. All right, we're going to a heading of 116. And let me reorient my mind for a flight sim, because there's no HUD up here to tell me where the heading's at. Okay, I've got to look. Uh, all right, got to look at the instruments. Got it. All right, let me check the trim. Okay, trim wheel's good. It's not, uh, sometimes if I don't adjust the trim while I'm on the ground, then when I take off and the first time I touch the trim wheel, it like defaults to some position that's like all the way at the top or all the way at the bottom. So I'm trying to get in the habit of remembering to adjust the trim wheel, uh, which I guess you can't see, but now you can see down here, as I bring the trim wheel down, you can see that arrow going up. And as I move it this way, you can see it going down. So I need to get in the habit of just doing that once or twice that's kind of a computer thing in the real world obviously you wouldn't have your you know trim suddenly default into the high position but all right here we go full power i'm going to really try to focus on keeping the airplane on the center of the runway because is it is it i've said this in like five videos now is it that realistic that a plane would pull that hard to the to the left or right surely not but Okay, 
Hey, we're at 60, uh, I guess, knots, 75 knots. I think we can take off here, yeah. Okay, and uh, G, raise the landing gear. I can hear it coming up. And in this, in this plane, you can actually see... Uh, you can see that the gear is down. I don't know that you can necessarily see when it's up down here if you look if you happen to look in your glass view let me uh all right we got some problems here let's take care of that first let's get ourselves flying straight and level sometimes i get i try to explain things while i'm in the midst of disaster and that's not good but anyway down here in your g1000 i think it actually tells you that the gear is down but you have to be looking right like right at it or you won't notice all right we need a heading of uh, 116 and then we're going to be i guess we'll go this way and let me press a uh, shift z i don't know how well that red text shows up but at least it's something for you to look at you can see the frames per second that i'm getting which is currently only uh, 16 15 probably getting a reduction in frame rate at the moment due to the rain and you can see that uh, we've got a little bit of wind 200 and I guess it's wind of uh, it's out of 237 and it's five knots if I'm reading that correctly so we're climbing a bit we need some lights did they ever fix the light problem or the the uh, the clickable virtual cockpit was also a problem in the in 2.0 I don't know if I've actually checked to see if they fixed that or not I'm trying to find the lights I don't see the lights maybe they're up top does anyone know where the light switch is at? Ah, oh, here we go okay so we want interior lights ah oh, cool we can switch the so the virtual cockpit works now. So these must be off. So let's turn everything on. Okay, that's a good improvement. And I still don't see anything. I still don't see better inside. Let me make sure I'm not descending. Okay, I'm not. Still banking over to that 116 heading, which we have now. We're going to go a little past it so that we can catch up to the to the GPS. Climbing probably more than we have to. So let's take out some of that trim. You know what I never did also? I never raised the uh, flap. Okay, flap's coming up. Just adjusting my trim a little bit here so that we don't uh, you know, have a sudden spike in our altitude or suddenly dive into the ground. Yeah, I was kind of hoping to have some kind of an interior light to light to illuminate this a little bit more because it seems kind of dark. All right, and now let's see. I don't really remember how high we need to be on this part of the journey when this is <laughs> probably not a good time to find out. But it looks to me like it's clear in front of us. It's the one thing about having terrain in your simulator is that you. Uh, have the potential of running into it at some point. But yeah, you can see if you look just off the wing here, you can see we're not very far up above the ground. And in fact, that over there appears to be higher than we are. But it looks like it's clearing up a little bit now. But, uh, yeah, we have um, 75 nautical miles to go, so if we have to climb over that, we might want to gain a little more altitude, and I'm sure we have to climb over that. All right, and we are banked all the way over to 130, and we're still not caught up to the GPS, but I'm not going to bank any more than that. You know, that's uh, 15 full degrees over the, over the initial bank heading, so... We'll, we'll catch up eventually. Yeah, let's put let's uh, let's climb a bit because we can see that we've got uh, you know there's some terrain over there for sure. And we can look out the right side. This I will say though this is a very beautiful simulator. I mean just out of the box without spending any money on. All right, we need to pitch up because we're going to 
I can feel the nose kind of settling down a bit, and we don't want that. But yeah, just out of the box without, you know, buying a bunch of scenery upgrades and aircraft upgrades, it really looks good. Some areas look better than others. Typically mountains, I think, always look a little better. Whoa. Sudden wind shear or something. I actually did get some scenery for... Uh, I forgot what it's called now. The Northwest Pacific, I think it's called. But it, I, when I got it, I didn't realize that it wasn't compatible with Prepared 2.x. It's uh, It was designed for Prepared 1. Point whatever. They are working on that, so it will be eventually... That scenery pack will eventually be available for Prepared, and it might even be by now. I haven't checked on it in a while. Uh, so once I get that... Once I get that uh, working, I'll, I'll fly around some of the Pacific Northwest, uh, the United States. Probably, you know, like Seattle, Oregon, Washington, that area. And see what the uh, scenery looks like. Uh, see what the game looks like with some, you know, with some scenery add-ons. I mean, if it looks really good, I would be tempted to get that. I think it's called uh, Orbix Global. O-R-B-X Global. But that's like pretty darn expensive but it, I guess it gives you improved scenery across the whole world uh, but it doesn't necessarily give you improved scenery you know for one specific area the, the nice thing about getting I think probably the nice thing about getting scenery for one specific area is that it's going to make that area look just amazing you know whereas global is probably just going to just generically improve the whole world okay so we're almost on track here we can see that our uh, GPS Man, we are like just inches above the ground, it feels like. But re, uh, we can see we're on track. And we have uh, 64 nautical miles to go. So we'll probably want to start banking to the left here. Uh, yeah, well, 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 we'll slowly bring it around. I'm not going to rush it because we're still a bit off. And yeah, we can see over here in this GPS. All right, now we're on track, so let's get to 116. Try not to rush it too much. I think I kind of sometimes throw the vessel down too far over to one side or the other. All right, we're almost on track. Uh, we do have a little bit of wind, so and it's actually 20 knots now. It's gone up quite a bit, so that wind could potentially push us off course, even though we're flying at a perfect, you know, 116 heading. So the wind's out of 124. So if the wind is out of 124, that's almost a headwind. So it really shouldn't have much impact on our left, right. It probably just slow us down. Okay, you can see I'm descending a bit. So let's uh, reconcile that. little bit of left bank just to get right on that 116 heading because we are down down the middle we don't need any correction to the right at the moment okay we're pretty well on track and again let's take a let's take a look around yeah when you put a little bit of weather in any scenario it really does just make things look cool. I mean, look at that, like, a mountain back there with that cloud layer kind of laying around the base. That's just really, really nice looking. And, oh, that's really cool, the way that it sort of has that fog effect down there. That is so cool. You know, one of these days, Orbiter's going to look like this, and I'm going to be flying around stuff like this in the XR2, trying not to overheat the vessel, because I'm trying to be low enough to appreciate all the awesome graphics and not flying at some ridiculous speed to burn up the vessel at the same time. Okay, uh, let's see. Our heading is getting a bit to the a bit off, so let's bank back to the left. Uh, 52 nautical miles to go. Coming into a little bit of rain here, it looks like few raindrops yeah 
Yeah, let's take a quick look at the external view. I think we can manage that without messing up our flight. I wish my frames per second were a little better. Actually, let's get back inside. It looks like we're dropping. Yep, we're dropping. I might need to tune down some of the graphic settings. I pretty much have everything set on, you know, ludicrous speed. Uh, like, you know, ultra, whatever, whatever the maximum stuff is. I think I pretty much have it on maximum across the board. Might actually improve my, it probably would improve my frame rate if I dialed some of that down a little bit. And I think that would be worth it. I'd rather have smoother, a smoother experience than having just, you know, the very, very best graphics. I wish you could have the best. I wish you could have both. But I don't know what kind of money you would have to put into a computer to have. You know, some of these games, they come out. I'm not much of a gamer, but some of these games come out and it's like, man, you can't play these things at their like at their very best settings, like even if you have a brand new state-of-the-art computer, you're not going to be able to play that game in its very best settings for like two years. It's going to take that long for the technology to really catch up. So it's, you're almost better off, you know, not buying games when they come out, especially because they're so expensive, you know, those AAA titles come out and they're you know forty nine fifty nine dollars wait a year or two and then they're then they cost you know nineteen dollars and then by that point you have a computer that's actually capable of playing them okay so we're just kind of holding here at this altitude um, I don't really know how high above ground level I am this just kind of feels good to me it feels like I'm up above the uh, the ground without worrying about crashing but I don't want to get way high because I know that I'm gonna to have to descend several thousand feet once I get over top of this I guess you might even call this like a plateau oh, need to bank to the left a bit I need to be smoother on these controls I actually have a yoke and it, for this type of craft that would be better um, for the for, I've been doing all my prepared flying using the my Thrustmaster, which I use for Orbiter, and it's good for Orbiter, but for this type of craft, I think a yoke would be better. And the problem with the yokes are, is that they're kind of a pain to set up, and then once you set them up, they're in the way for using your computer otherwise, so you have to take it down when you're done with it. What I really would have to have, and if I really wanted to have a nice flight sim set up, I would have to have a dedicated desk. Um, I don't know if I could really get a whole computer for that but at least like somehow have a desk that was set up with everything just that I could just set it and forget it and not have to worry about mounting and unmounting and I could even hook my pedals up I bought uh, pedals and yoke for Microsoft Flight Simulator like 2002 or whatever version it was back then had them ever since they still work but I've never really found much use for that kind of stuff in Orbiter We're almost back on track. We got a heading of about 115, and you can see our GPS needle just slightly off center. So we'll get we'll get lined up flying this heading. We should. Okay, now we can probably even start thinking about taking away some of this speed. Maybe start descending a little bit. I actually accidentally bumped the trim wheel. Didn't mean to do that. So we only have 33 nautical miles to go. That's not very far. And I remember from the last time I flew this leg, the direction of the runways is uh, 4, so 40 degrees, and 22. One thing I really like about flight sims, or just sims in general, but kind of specifically flight sims, very peaceful. 
you know, if you ever just get in and fly, um, I remember one time years ago, um, back when I was, before I was playing with Orbiter, I flew from Florida to, to like Chicago in, in a, uh, in a caravan, Cessna caravan. I made, you know, several stops along the way, did it all VOR to VOR, didn't use GPS. And it was just, it took a long time. I mean, I mean, you know, a couple hours or three, four hours, it's, it's, uh, you know, even though you're flying, it's, that's still quite a distance to cover. And um, I think it was like Orlando to Chicago is what I did. But it was just a really peaceful, fun way to spend, uh, you know, fun way to spend the day, at least fun for me. I'm kind of an introvert and a geek. Other people would think it would be horribly boring and lame and all that, but I love this kind of stuff. So it was a really fun way for me to spend the day. I did another similar flight. I remember, I think I went from, I think, I don't think I finished it, but I at least got most of the way through it. Went from Orlando to, uh, like it was Portland, Maine, I was going to at the time. All right, let's slow things down. We're getting close. But yeah, some of the, I, you know, I used to like video games a bit more when I was a little younger, but. I guess the older I get, the uh, the slower my mind works, and I just appreciate things that are low key. Okay, we're on track for for KSKX. Of course, we can't see it. That could be a bit of a problem. And I don't really know if I can set up an approach with the GPS. It's not something I have memorized well enough to do, even if I could. Um, you know what I remember, though? We kind of needed to fly out this way a bit because of the because of the alignment of the runways. Were, if we fly straight in on course, we're going to end up we're going to end up uh, basically perpendicular to the runway, and we don't need we don't want that. So let me go out this way a bit. Actually, which way is the wind? I suppose I, suppose I should check on that. It's out of 238, so we would be better off landing on runway 22. And if I go with the way I'm going now, we're going to end up on 40, or, or runway 4. But it's only a 5 knot wind, and that's not ma major. Six knot, five knot. I think though. I think I think if there's any wind above three knots, I think you're supposed to land in the proper direction. I seem to recall that information from back when I was trying to read a little bit about you know how to fly and you know try to do things in a semi-realistic fashion. called like uh there's actually a term for it when the winds are under two knots or something i think it's actually just no wind okay so we are purpose uh on purpose we're flying a bit off heading you can see the gps down in the lower right uh, the idea is that we will get in front of the runway so that we when we turn back in toward the airport will be on track for the uh, runway alignment. That's the idea. That's the theory. I still think I'm going to have a hard time landing this plane because it's just kind of... It just feels like it bobbles around a lot. I mean, it's certainly not the fault of the plane. It's the pilot. But I might be better off just sticking with the caravan because it just seems like it's a stiffer plane. It doesn't bounce around so much. What is this, like, hole in the ground here that's got all this fog in it? That's kind of like a depression area or something. Yeah. All right, I'm going to start banking back toward... this way and try to kind of fly maybe what I what I kind of think will be 
uh, not quite a right angle to the airport, but close to it. Or the runway, rather. I think I'm kind of flying at a right angle now. I'm not sure. Look over there. I can't really see where it's at. It's out there somewhere. Hmm. Alright, back to the forward view. And let's look at our instruments. Okay, yeah, now on the GPS we can see the airport. So basically the, the idea is I'm going to fly down to that point, then turn in. Of course, I don't want to crash into the ground in the meantime, so let's pitch up. What I'd like to do, I don't know if you can, I'd like to create like an arbitrary line on the GPS. And so instead of having it fly me directly into the middle of the runway, which is useless, give me a line that's 10 kilometers out from the runway and let me fly to that point. Not sure if there's a way to set that up on the GPS. That would be far more handy, you know, than flying just directly into an airport. Now I did that when I did that Leesburg video when I was learning to do... Uh, whatever I called it, using the GPS for navigation. There, it, that's basically what it did, but that only works for certain airports. Because if the airport doesn't have like its own set of radio beacons around the airport, then there's nothing to target. But with GPS, I would think I could say, just, you know, give me a point in, in, in geography, in space, that's 10 nautical, or 10 miles, 10 kilometers, whatever, I don't care. 10 not m kilometers from the runway and let me fly straight to that point then I'll do this bank around try not to overdo it okay, yeah, we're overdoing it because obviously you can't just show up at an airport and drop straight down to the ground I mean you need to be in front of the runway by several miles Okay, we're coming around. And I guess... I guess we need a, a speed somewhere like... I kind of tend to... I think I'm slowing things down too much, generally speaking, and, I, and that's why I'm having so many problems landing, because I'll, you know, kind of waffle the plane. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm not lined up nearly as well as I had hoped. And I don't think I'm as far out as I was wanting to be either. Maybe, we'll see. But we'll go ahead and fly at a pretty good angle back this way. That way we can get well in front of the runway without getting too close to it, hopefully. That should be enough. I kind of want to, I kind of need to keep it in view because I can't, you know, this is the one thing that I would like, you know, in theory that the track IR would be good at would be you could fly that way and still be able to kind of glance your head oh yeah we need to turn <laughs> but that, the, that peripheral vision thing I mean you really need that in a flight sim man we overshot the runway that way I see I feel like if I had a you know a wider view I could I would not do that because I would see that I was getting to that point where I'd be overshooting let's go ahead and slow things down a bit even though we're too low according to the uh, lights there. All right, let's not screw this up. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the, view the viewpoint center directly in front. Let's slow things down even more, in fact. I'm gonna mess this up, I already know it. All right, that was dumb. For one thing, I just made a big mistake there. I used the flaps basically as air brakes. So I didn't give myself enough time in front of the runway. That's part of the problem. Okay. Now I'm just going to do this by feel. I'm not even going to look at numbers because if I do, it'll probably just mess me up. Because I, I think pretty much when I land an orbiter, I'm almost doing it 
purely by just how it feels. I, I, I do look at the vertical speed, and that's about it. All right, don't botch this. Don't botch this. Okay, we're coming in. It feels like we're waffling really bad. Okay, we're not as low as we think we are. Don't flare yet. And my USB just reset something. It reset again. I hate that type of computer glitch thing. Didn't that happen last time when I landed here or tried to land here? Well, that's amazing. You know what I also, I also forgot? I forgot to cut the throttle when I came over the threshold of the, of the runway. So, all right, let's take a look at that. That was pretty terrible, but at least we're down in one piece. It's the brakes. I'm gonna get wheel stop here. I just, I, I, I can't believe a real airplane would fight that much. I just can't, I can't believe that's possible. Okay. All right, we're stopped. Now let's uh, just quickly look at the last, you know, 30 seconds or something of that replay. Um, let me actually put it at 90 just to make sure I'm back far enough. Okay, and let me do the external view. Now, one thing I have to do here is I have to pick a different view because this view is just really glitchy. See, so like right when I'm like right there, I feel like I'm on the ground. That's that's big problem I have with this airplane. Ugh, that's awful, look at that. I also landed going downwind. Hmm. Well, it wasn't as bad as some. Um, let me look at that one more time. Let me do this also. Uh, pause. Okay, instant replay. Let's actually back up a little bit farther than 90. Let's go to 120. Okay, we've got that same view and let me bring this down so you can see what I you know what was happening with the instruments um, of course I don't have a good that's better I guess the issue is this plane just doesn't it doesn't feel like it has any stiffness to it it feels like uh, just like it's like all over the place uh, I'm sure it's just me but it, would, it just doesn't feel like it's reality. So here we are. Coming in and again, like right when I get like about here, I just, I'm on the ground, I'm on the ground, flare, flare. And then I'm not. And then I do stupid stuff like that and bounce. Well. Oh well, no complaints. It was better than the uh, obviously the last one, which we crashed completely. So uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this hop. And in the next hop, I don't have my chart next to me, so I don't know where we're going next. But I think we're getting close to the end of this mountain hopping series. Um, I think there's only a few left. Although I think the way I wrote it, I think the way I, I think the way I made the series is that you could actually you actually end up back where you started, and so you could recycle the whole thing if you wanted. Because back in 2002, 2004, whatever it was when I made this uh, mountain hop journey. Uh, when, I, when I set up the flight plan, I, I flew it all the time. Like I was, there was a while there where I was like flying it every day because I was just having so much fun with it. So yeah, that's gonna end it for this part of the video. I have no idea if it's over 30 minutes or not. I hope not. Uh, if you liked the video, please, please hit the like button. And if you didn't like it, hit the don't like button. More importantly, leave comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, I always appreciate your feedback too. I mean, like the guy that told me the uh, the setting about the, the the wide screen thing. That's a big help. So if you know things like that, if you see things that I'm doing wrong, always leave me your feedback. If I'm not using the if I'm not using the um, they're not called MFDs, but if I'm not using the instruments right, let me know something I can do better. If there's uh, 
a better way to navigate if I can get to the airport better things like that I'm, I always like to hear those comments so I will see you in the next hop